On Monday morning, after having spent the evening in Bethany, where he probably stayed with his friend Lazarus, who he had recently raised from the dead and who had been the source of a lot of controversy for him, Jesus arose with his disciples and they once again made their way towards Jerusalem. Like the day before, they went down the Mount of Olives, through the Kidron Valley, and up into the city. But along the way, Jesus realized that he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree covered with leaves, which typically would be the sign of fruitfulness, he approached it to see if there were any figs on it. But unfortunately, there were no figs at all. And therefore, Jesus cursed the fig tree, because it had the external signs of beauty, but inside was fruitless. Unfortunately, whenever Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, he came to see that the state of the people of Israel was very similar to the fig tree. Externally beautiful, but internally corrupt. Just the day before, he had publicly declared himself the king of Israel, riding into the city on a donkey. But rather than waging war on the Romans, and rather than kicking out the pagan oppressors from the land, Jesus once again, like the day before, makes his way to the temple. And he's not happy with what he finds. Whenever he gets there, he sees that they have reduced this holy and reverent place of worship into nothing more but a marketplace used for their own personal gain. And so what he does is he gets a whip of cords, he flips the money changers tables, and he starts scattering the animals, scattering the money, and kicking everybody out, shouting as he does so, this was meant to be a house of prayer, but you have made it into a den of thieves. What he's doing is he is referencing Isaiah chapter 56, where the prophet Isaiah said this, and the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. Isaiah is saying that not only will the people of Israel come to the temple to worship God, but even the surrounding nations, the Gentiles, will gather together to worship the God of Israel, the one true God who created all things. Most likely the marketplace that Jesus found was in the court of the Gentiles, the outer court of the temple, where foreigners could come to worship God. And so what the people were doing at this time period is they were depriving the Gentiles of the one place where they could worship the God of Israel. They were taking this house of prayer and they were reducing it to a den of thieves. And Jesus is mad. Rather than being the king who comes in and destroys the Romans, he's waging war on his own people because they have become spiritually corrupt. Jesus is in the temple until the evening, and then at the end of the day, as the day before, he leaves and returns to Bethany.